Hello, welcome to this quick tutorial for ClickTeam Fusion 2.5. So in this tutorial we're going to cover how you can restrict the time uh, between an event taking place and this is very useful for say for example a tank game um, where you're going to be shooting bullets. You don't want a stream of bullets or um, grenades or whatever it is that you're firing to come out. Like The user could just rapidly tap spacebar. I'm just going to increase this ammo count here so you can see. You know, you don't want to be able to do that. It just doesn't look good at all. Uh, you want a bit of a limit in there. So we could impose limits in Fusion. I'm going to show you two ways that you can do it. There's a simple way and a little bit more intermediate way or advanced way that you can do it. Uh, but the first thing is you can limit uh, this event, which is the event that creates the bullet. So the user presses spacebar, it creates the bullet. Um, and then it sets all the properties up for the bullet, like the direction and whatnot. So what you can do is you can restrict this event simply by right clicking on it and add a new condition. And then on the special conditions icon here, you can right click and choose restrict actions. So you can choose like a manual delay. You could set it to like 25 milliseconds. So now the user has to wait 25 milliseconds before they can execute that event again, as you can see. Now, um, it can it is flow. It's not. It's not completely um, good to use that. It is if you're brand new to Clipton Fusion 2.5, and to be honest, it does the trick. Um, however, um, as you get more advanced with Fusion 2.5, you're going to want to use some kind of custom counter to do that. So, how can we do it? Well, we can insert an object. In fact, I'll show you the, the better way. We don't need to really use an object for that. Just go up here to your global values. So you can select your application here in the workspace toolbar. Go to global values tab and then create a new global value. And we'll call it something like unders int underscore timer. And what we're going to do is we'll insert a group of events here called custom timer. And we can add an event that says always. So if your game is running at 60 frames a second, it will execute this 60 times per second. We can do always add to the global value one. So when I run the application now and check out the debugger and check out our global values, you'll see that the int timer is getting one added to it every tick. So if your game's running at 60 frames a second, that's 60 times per second. So it's going to increment by 60 per second. So we could use this as like a custom timer. So now, rather than having, upon pressing spacebar, we can replace it with repeat while spacebar is pressed. And then we can add a new condition. And we're going to compare two global values, uh, two general values. And then we're going to do, um, we're going to get the global value int timer. And we're going to say mod 5 equal to 0. So now when I run the application, I keep my hand down on the spacebar, you can see we've still got a jet stream coming out there. So we can change this number and make it a little bit higher. And as you can see, the higher the number, the bigger the interval between each bullet being able to be shot. So if we do 25, it'll be an even bigger. I've got my hand down on space. You can see there's an even bigger interval between the bullets being fired. Uh, and you can set this as high as you want. I'm going to explain this to you in just a second, but you can set this as high as you want. So you could set it to 60. As you can see, even bigger gap. And this is using a custom timer. So basically how this timer works is we add one to um, our global value. So we've got this variable here, which is int timer. And we're adding one to it every frame tick. That's every tick of the events. So if your game's running at 60 frames a second, it's going to add 60 to this timer. Um, so what we're doing by limiting this event is we use this expression here. So we compare two general values and we're saying is int timer, so the value of int timer, um, we're going to uh, we're using what we call modulus and we put 60 in and it equals zero. So basically what we're trying to say here is can the value of this timer be divided by zero with no remainders? Uh, and that's basically what we're trying to say here. So we know that it adds 60 to the counter every second. So if this number here is 60, then it's going to be every second. If the number is 30, then it's going to be every half a second. So you can see now how the increments work. So if you knock it down to five, it's going to be a, an even smaller gap. So it's all about um, the, va the value that we're comparing, which is the int timer, 
um, you know, can we can we divide it without any remainders left over, uh, which is what the zero is for uh, here. Uh, so basically, that is how we do it. So if I hold down space, you can see that we can create a constant stream. If we want that to be a little bit bigger, we just increase this number, and then if we want it to be even bigger, so like every half a second, we can just increase it to 30. And that is how you can do it. So there's two ways you can do it in Fusion. You can do it through that way, which I've just showed you, which is a little bit more advanced because I'm probably introducing you to a whole new concept here. Um, but there's always the basic way at the beginning as well, where you can simply just add a new condition uh, and use restrict actions, which is pretty much exactly the same as this. Um, so there you have it. There's, there's two options that are available for you. Again, we could go into much more than this. Um, on how the internal timer and custom timers work, uh, but we'll leave that for another video. Thanks for tuning in.